In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the options with pass selection. And the main goal we're going to have to do here is we're going to, um, at the end of the video, we're going to set up to where we can take uh, both routes fr uh, from R11 to R19 and R20 to get to Rudder uh, 18's loopback, which we still have in our uh, routing table. So that's sitting there. There was a question posted after the uh, last video, and it says, uh, how far are we going to take this? Um, it's actually going to be a full-scale loadout. So uh, I'm building in each section, testing out different features, and I'm leaving them operational. So we still have RIP running on the routers that we set up with RIP, and then we're going to work our way up to uh, all the EIGRP, then we're going to start loading e uh, OSPF in, and then we're going to get, once we get OSPF operational, and then we're going to start getting a BGP, getting some other operations going, and then we'll get an MPLS, and so on and so forth. So it'll be a full-scale build by the time we're done. We're just taking and we're going through every con uh, where how to configure everything and get everything op operational. Now, in pass selection, the feasibility condition basically means is if uh, you were trying to get to a point A to point B, why would you take one route over another? So right now we're getting um, we're getting these routes in, and you'll see that based on the way that this is set up, we're choosing to go router 19 versus um, did router tw uh, router 20's route never came in. I just noticed that. Um, we're going to do a show run pipe section EIGRP. Now, because of the way that the network is set up, and I'm not advertising it, why is it not? Hmm. I'm perplexed. Anyway, um, with the feasibility condition on R11, we have it set up to where we're both using router 19. Well, we're going via router 19. Now, why would we be going router 19? Well, I can tell you. If you look right here, we have a gig interface there, and we don't have gig interfaces here. So the gig interface is going to have a lower bandwidth, or I'm sorry, a higher bandwidth, which is going to make the metric smaller. So that's why we're going that route versus router uh, versus going to uh, router 20. So now, if we wanted to change that, we would have to look at the interface configs and see exactly why that's doing it. So we would have to take a look and do a uh, show IP route EIGRP for a particular network. So we were to do a show IP route for the this network right here. Uh, it may not let us do... So we, basically the way this is working here is we have a traffic share count of 1 and the minimum bandwidth is a gig because that's what the interface is here. Now if we wanted to modify that to where we wanted to use router 20 as well, we could, but you notice how right here we have gig on this uh, this link here. Now how come that doesn't affect inbound on this way? Well the way that the metric works is outgoing. So if our metric to get to R20 is, or I'm sorry, in, our, in this case, uh, I'll click back on this guy, um, our metric to get to R19's loopback is 2816. And our metric to get to router 18's loopback is 3072. So if you take the metric to get from here to here, or I'm sorry, from here to here, and then add that up to get to here to here, that is going to be what this metric equals. So, with that being said, that being said, you have to take that into account when you're looking at this. So if it tells you you need to prefer the route to go to router 20 to get there, that's fine. We can easily do that. We can just modify the bandwidth. We can we can mess with the delay, we can set the offset list to be higher, we can do whatever we want. Um, so depending on the situation, we can do quite a bit of things to do um, to for our pass selection. But the feasibility condition goes based off of the lowest feasible distance, and the feasible distance is going to be your total connection between here and there to get to where you need to go. That's the feasibility condition. That is the end-to-end -end cost. Now the advertised distance is going to be what is advertised to you by your next top uh, to get there. So R19 will advertise a cost of, of X to get to router 18. And then our reported distance is going to be our costs from 11 to 19. So you take the reported distance and the advertised distance, you add those together, and that's the feasible distance. So that's going to be how we go about getting our configuration to go that way. Now I'm actually going to take a quick um, side trip here, and I'm going to figure out why we are not Let's do a show IP EIGRP interfaces. We don't have the loopback in there. 
let's see, on R19, what is this? We do show IP EIGRP interfaces. Okay, the loopback is there. So it obviously is not taking it. So let's go here, let's do config T, router EIGRP3. Uh, address family IPB4, A1, and we're going to type in uh, redistribute or uh, topology base. We're going to type in redistribute connected. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to router 18, or I'm sorry, router 11. We're going to go show IP route, and now we've got that route. Really, it's not coming through. Why is that not coming through? Router 20's loop package is not there. So that makes me wonder what's going on. Is there some sort of... What does R20 got? Is R20 down? Let's do a show... Because my, my main goal is to do unequal cost, cost uh, do equal cost load balancing to router 18 and then unequal cost load balancing. So we'll do unequal cost first and we'll flip back over to equal cost. And let's see here. So we're going to do a show run. Let's do a show EIGRP address family IPv4 interfaces. Alright, so that's there. We're going to do um, neighbors. Because I had the peering to 11, 18, and 19. Those are all good. So let's do a show. Let's see what accounting. Let's see what we've learned. We distributed nothing. So let's, let's figure out why. Show IP interface brief. Oh, I don't even have a loop back. That's why it's not working. I'm like, well, what the heck? Okay. Well, we're going to go to global config. We're going to type in, uh, we're actually going to go to router EIGRP. We're going to pull that config out and fix this because we don't obviously need that in there. And we're going to go to router EIGRP there. And we're going to go into topology base. Topology base and type in no redistribute connected. We're going to exit out of here. We're going to go to interface loopback 0. IP address is going to be 10.100.20. Dot 20 and then a 32 bit mask, and then we're going to go to router 11 and then we're going to go Shopee route, and there it is. So that makes sense. All right, so we're both using router uh, 19 to get to both locations, so that, that's fine. So if I was to do a trace route to this address, we're going to take the long way around. We're going to go 19 and then we're going to go 20. So we're taking the long way around to get to where we need to go. So you might think, well, why are you going that? Go, why are you going up here to go to go to here? Well, it's it's the way that the the routing is going because of the fact we have this gig interface right here. The gig interface is going to screw us up if we don't take care of that. So um, because the because the uh, higher bandwidth path is the best path to get to point A to point B, that's how we're going to go. Now we could modify the bandwidth and drop that down to 100 meg, like fast Ethernet is, and it would be equal cost. That would modify the feasibility condition. That would be also modifying our, or that wouldn't be modifying our vector attributes. That would be modifying our bandwidth. But if we wanted to modify our vector attributes, we would have to see exactly what is set. So we'd have to set it to where it is 19 is uh, uh, router 19 is not the preferred path. So if we were to go in there and say the delay is higher, that would be modifying the vector attributes, and that would increase. That would flip us over to make us go to router um, router 20. So why don't we do that? Let's go to router 11, go to interface, um, we're going to go to interface gig 1 slash 0, we're going to type in uh, delay, literally is going to be, we'll say is uh, something arbitrarily high, so, so like 10,000. And then we're going to go to do show IP EIG or, or do I show IP route. So now we're going to prefer the route to router 20 through all these. So now we're going to do a do trace this guy and it's going to go through 20 to get to 18. That's how it's going to go. Now, do I need to go that high? I probably didn't need to go that, that high with anything, but it's the, the fact of the matter that we can't. Now, we can do no delay, 
do a do show IP route, and then it's going to flip back over as soon as it it updates. It's going to go back to 19, right? So that's how we're going to go. Now that's fine; it'll work. But how can we modify it to where we don't have to modify the bandwidth, but we want to modify the attributes to match the interface? So we'd have to do a do show interface gig one slash zero, and we'd have to see what the delay is. So we'd have to we'd have to figure out what we or not that not the interface. Um, the bandwidth is this. The delay is 10, sec, 10 microseconds. So the, the bandwidth is this. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to go in to the um, we'd have to go do show IP route, and we'd have to say, okay, what do we got to do to equal this on the the fast Ethernet interface? What do we have to either add to fast tw uh, two slash zero or subtract from gig one slash zero to make the the metrics match? And you're like, whoa, I've never done that before. Well, you might be challenged to. That's why I'm that's why I'm going there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a um, our metric to get to router nineteen is twenty eight sixteen. So we let's uh, you will according to what I've heard you, we will have the calculator. Calculator. We're going to uh, have the calculator. So we're going to take 3072 minus 28816. That's going to be 256. So it's 256 is going to be the additional to there. And I believe that's going to be 256 is. Um, I'm trying to think here. The 256 is going to be our connection from R11 from here to R19. That's That's where that comes into play. So what we're gonna do, and it's a little bit lower from uh, from here to here. I forget what that would be, but anyway, um, the point that I'm trying to get across here is we'd have to modify our metric to get there. Now, if you've never done this before, it can be kind of difficult because you have to start playing with it. So we want to see exactly what we have to do to get this to um, to go up there. So now we need to go to the interface level and what do we need to do we need to modify something to get the delay where we need it to be so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the delay a little bit so we're gonna say the delay on this interface is gonna be probably 10 microseconds so we're gonna go to router 19 and we're gonna type in show interface gig 1 slash 0 and the delay is 10 microseconds just the bandwidth is, har is arbitrarily higher and then we're going. Oh, I should say significantly higher because it's a gig interface. So we're going to go to fast or on R11. We're going to go to fast two slash zero, and we're going to type in delay. And we're just going to start typing something in so we can get the delay close. Now we don't know what it is off the top of our heads, but we know how to get to it. So we want to modify the delay. We don't want to modify the bandwidth because the bandwidth would be too easy. You just go in there and punch in the value, and that would get us to where we need to be. There's a question. Why don't you just modify the variance? I said I could. That's actually a, that's another option. But we want to. We don't want to make it easy. We want to make it a little more complicated. We want to think like a CCIE proctor. How can we make this kind of difficult? So we're going to say we're going to we're going to make the delay a thousand. And we're going to hit enter, and then we're going to do a do show IP route. All right. So now we're uh, now we're grabbing this. But notice how the delay is. This this metric right here is really really high, right? Well, a delay obviously is not going to work. That high of a delay is not going to work. So let's delay. Let's drop it down to 100 and see if that changes anything. Do show IP route. Okay, so now we're actually getting dual cost. So if we look at this, this is on the. Uh, I'm at the right interface. Which, which interface am I on? Oh, I'm on the wrong interface. So let me go back down to the very bottom here and type in no delay and do show IP route. Okay, I want to do that. I'm on the wrong interface. So interface fast 2 slash 0. And I want to say we're going to do a do show IP route. So our delay right now is 3072. We want to go delay is going to be, say, um, 
So the way you want to look at this, and the easiest way to look at it, the delay we're looking at by default is 10 microseconds. If we bump that up by 10 uh, by uh, multiply that by 10, it's going to give us 100. So let's we'll do that, and we'll see if that makes any change. Okay, nothing at the moment. So on most cases, what we would do is we would see where we're at total end-to-end -end bandwidth. So we have to go, obviously, uh, that's not enough. So let's go 1,000. All right, we're still choosing router 19. So we need to go up a little higher. I'm going to go add in 10,000. Oh, wait a minute. I need to... I, did, I was actually doing it the wrong way. I am... Uh, Okay, uh, take what I just said and tweak it a little bit. So we've got the delay so high now, it's never going to use um, this interface. So a delay of 10,000 is never going to work, so we need to take a delay of 1 and do show IP route. All right, so it's still, it's still preferring 19 to get there, which is fine. Uh, we still have to figure out where we're going to So delay, obviously modifying the delay here, we're going to say no delay here. Um, and what we're going to do is we have to go back to this interface and we have to modify the delay to bring it down to be equal to this guy. So on fast 2 here, we have to raise the bandwidth to make it equivalent to this guy or we have to raise the delay on this one to make this one able to be fighting with it. So we're going to go back to interface gig 1 slash 0. I'm going to type in delay, I believe 100 worked. Yeah, a, a delay of 100 works. So that makes it equal. So now we're going to do a do trace to this guy's loopback. Let's see if we take both paths out. And we do. We take 19 and 20, and then 19 to 18. So we get to where we need to go. So we take uh, both paths to get there. So we're using all three routes to get there, which is a great, or, or what they call equal cost load balancing. Okay? So that gets us where we need to go. That's modifying the vector attributes. That, modify, that doesn't modify the metric weights, though. And you might say, okay, well, how does that come into play? Well, the classic metric is going to be um, is going to be scaled by 256. So whatever you do, so bandwidth and delay, so bandwidth and delay, whatever that is. So bandwidth of a gig plus a delay of whatever. So in this case, is, I believe it's it's one. So it's going to be a delay of um, one one microsecond. So you're going to take those two attributes. Scale that by the bandwidth and divide that by multiply that by 256. That's going to be your scale. Wide metric is going to be by 65535. So understanding the classic metric versus the wide metric, that's how you're going to be able to dis disseminate between the two. Now, in the, the, the it doesn't use microseconds in uh, wide metrics; it uses picoseconds, which is even faster than wide metrics. Now, that is modifying the metric. That's going to go into and typing in metric. So if we were to go to uh, router EIGRP1 and type in metrics that's how we metric weights that's how you would do that that would be doing this we modified the attribute by increasing the delay on gig 1 slash 0 we would made it equal cost routes and by doing a thousand gave us what we needed so it's going to be 10 times um, or 100 times because it's a much faster interface we uh Put a thousand on there, so what's that? A hundred times? Yeah, a hundred times, a um, hundred times worse, so that it makes that these equal cost routes. So that's that's one way to do that. And you want to know how to do that ahead of time, so you can play with it. Make sure you're aware of how the, how you would do that. So that's delay. I always I always recommend using delay to do that, so that you have um, it's a little more easy to work with. And so that's going to be the one thing. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine who took the lab not too long ago. He said that one of the things he had to do was go and modify the delay, and that was able. To, he was able to fix something. So, um, so what we're going to take a look at now, and the classic metric, if you look at that, if we were to do a uh, drop out of here and do a show IP protocol, the metric is going to be this. It's going to be K1 and K3, so bandwidth and delay, both have a metric of one, and it's scaled. If we were to look at the show IP route. Um, is it that? Uh, do show IP route EIGRP? No, it's uh, show IP route 10.100.18.18. Uh, 
it's doesn't show it here because or uh, well the metric right here. So we have a the metric is 28 uh, 40 uh, 28 four sixteen based on our, our setup. So we have a traffic share count of one. So right now the total delay is 112 microseconds with the minimum bandwidth delay of 100k. Right there, right. So we have a total delay of a thousand micro or ten thousand uh, thousand twelve microseconds with the minimum bandwidth delay of minimum bandwidth of uh, gigabit. So we're having, and the, the hops is two, traffic share count is one. So we do a trace to that location. We get, uh, we use both paths to get there. So now if you were to go to router 20, and then do the same lookup, do a show IP route, um, you're not going to get the details from here. You have to actually go to the um, the network. So do a uh, show IP route for uh, 10.100.18.18. And this is where you get into that. If you look, where is it? Um, looking for it, I don't see it. All right, so we have our metric is ten thousand eighty, ten thousand eight eighty. I wonder if it's a show IP protocols. Show IP protocols. Yes, rib, rib, rib scale. So our rib scale is 128 right now, which is the maximum. If we were to go in here and go to router EIGRP, router EIGRP uh, 3, router EIGRP THRE, address family IPv4 A1, and type in rib um, topology base. Uh, where is it? There's a rib scale. Exit out of here. Metric. No, there's a there's an actual command. I forget where it sits. Um, where does it go? Uh, it goes AF interface gig one slash zero. No, that wouldn't be it either. There's a command where you can modify. I forget where the command sits. Um, so it's the metric rib, rib scale command. Which, if I was to find next, metric rib scale, the fault value is 128. Okay, so I guess that's where we would do it. We would do it um, under, let me scoot this up just a little bit. We would do exit out of here and metric rib scale, that's where it's at. Rib scale, and then we would say if we wanted to modify it, we could take that down. What that does is, is it modifies. The um, actually, I've got it right here. The find next when configured uh, EIGP routes. Uh, let's see here. Scaling value. So the higher the number, the lower the metric. The lower the number, the higher the metric. So if you go in there and you modify this, then you're going to be telling it that it's going to be a uh, worse value. I think that's how it works. Metric grip scale will say is, you know, say 56 or 64. Let's do it. And we're going to do it. Then we're going to go look at R11. And we're going to do a show IP route. And now. Uh, some of these routes are going away as you modify the metric. So before we were able to do, we had equal cost routes to, no we didn't. Um, if we were to go to 20, 
and do a do show IP protocol. Now it's saying that the metric, the rib scale is, is 64, and before it was a show IP, do show IP route, and before it was 10880, now it is 21760. So now if we were to go back and, and say no metric rib scale and do a show, do show IP route, now it shows up as 10880. So it modifies your rib to make the metric, so the lower the number, the higher the metric. The higher the rib scale, the lower the number. So if you were to go to rib scale and say, uh, let's go to A and whack this out and go to the end and say it is 255, do show IP route. Now the, nu now the number is 5461. So it's going to get smaller. So the higher your rib scale, this is going to allow you to mod play with your metrics in such a way that it's going to make it easier to scale your network. So we're just going to play this and type in no and bring it back to 128. And then we're going to go back to 11 and do a show IP route. And we're going to have 28416. Before that was something else, uh, 28160. So the uh, number went down a little bit. And... 28160, 28416. So obviously the numbers are going to skew just a little bit here and there, depending on how you set it up. But that's a general idea for it. And then that's that is me that is modifying the wide metric, the rib scale. The what that's that's probably the easiest way to manipulate your metrics is to do that. And so they might tell you in the exam to modify the metrics, but do not modify the interface delay or interface attributes and don't modify the metrics. So the one way you could do that is using the rib scale command and I would have like it's one of those things where if you don't touch on it very often you forget where things are at. That's why we go back through the labs and test these things out. So we, we test out every feature and talk about it. So now if we were to look at router 20 or router 11 I should say we have equal cost routes so let's do a trace route to this loop back again. We're using router 19 and 20 to get there. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go back to router 20 or back to router 11. Now we're doing what they call ECMP or equal cost multipath. We're going to go to global config, type in interface gig 1 slash 0, and type in no delay 1000. Do show IP route, and we're back down to just using 19, right? I'm going to type in router router eigrp 1. Type in variance is going to be, uh, I think we'll use it's 10. We use 10. That should fix our problem. And yes, this is what they call e this is what they call unequal cost load balancing. So now what we've done is before we had just routes into 19. I went up there and made the modification of variance to 10. So it's going to take the the interface bandwidth. We have gig here, and it's going to make this one say, okay, for every one pa for every uh, 10 packages you send here, send one this way. So it's going to allow you to load balance. And if we were to do do a sh uh, do show IP route for this route right here, you're going to see something unique about the share count. The share count is going to be different. So the share count right now is share count is 13 to 120. We have the microseconds is 112, and the minimum bandwidth is 100 meg. And the metric is 28416. If we look down here, the microseconds is 32, the bandwidth is gig, and the cost of the metric is 3072. So by using variance, we're able to do unequal cost load balancing, and we're going to do a do trace to 10.100.18.18, and we're using both to get. Well, now we're using. Why are we using that? Oh, that's well. Tending, well, it's it's weird because sometimes that star would indicate that it's referring this way. But if we do a do trace, it should be it's going over. Interesting, it's going that way. So, uh, if we were to do a variance of, let's do a variance of nine, and then do a show IP route. Now we only got nineteen in there. Do trace. Just uh, eight, 19 to 18. Now we go in there and modify 
this to this guy. This is why it's not so. It's not always recommended to use variance. Do trace. Um, we're going 20 to 18. So now it's technically not equal cost load. Uh, uh, unequal cost load balancing now. And I shouldn't say unequal cost load balancing because there's really no such thing as load balancing. It's unequal cost load sharing. So we have this in there now. So um, it's supposed to use this path because it's got the lower metric, but it actually isn't doing that. So um, let's go to 11 and trace back, or 18 and trace back. Let's do a trace to 10.100.11.11. Uh, all right, so he's using equal cost, and you can tell. But if we go to 11 and we do a uh, drop out of here and do a trace to 10.100.18.18, we're not using the unequal cost load balancing. This is um, it's basically preferring one path over the other. Now, here's one of the kickers you can do. If you're running into this problem and you're not sure why it's doing this, we do a show IP Ceph for the 10.100.18.18 slash 32, it's going to tell you what it's going to be using, the next hop. Now if you were to do this, say, in, uh, internal, it's going to tell you what it's going to send. So for the first packet, it's going to send out towards router 20. The second packet is going to send out towards router 19. The third packet is going to send here. From here on out, it's going to send um, for all these other hash buckets, it's going to send out towards router 19, and then it's going to start back over to this. So, this share count that it's talking about, that means just about every packet's going to go out towards router 19 instead of 20. So, if we were to do a trace route, I don't have a way of doing that. It's going to keep showing us that, but it actually is working if you look at it from that perspective. Now, the other thing you can do here is if you really want to get particular about it, you can do what they call IP Ceph, and you can specify the load sharing capability, and you can say the algorithm is going to be include ports. Now, by default, Ceph just uses the um, source and destination IP address to make a hash to determine it where it's going to go. That's where you get this stuff right here from, and this is the hash that I'm referring to. So the hash is going to be um, where it sends the traffic to. So we were to say include ports, and we're going to include source and destination. And you can set the fixed ID if you want to. Now we come down here and we do a show IP SEP internal. It's still going to do this, but it's supposed to make it a little bit more optimized. So now if we were to get rid of variance and go back with the delay, this might change a little bit. Let's see if it actually does that. We're going to go to uh, config T router EIGRP 1, and type in no variance 10. Type in interface gig 1 slash 0 and type in delay of 1000. Drop out of here and do a show IP route. Alright, so we're. Uh, sorry, uh, the delay is interface gig 1 slash 0. Uh, the delay is 100. Do show IP route. Alright, so now we're load balancing. So that, that's going to give us that. So we're, now we're going to jump out of here. And do the up arrow a couple times. So now it's going to use it's equal, equally sending the traffic out, but it's only going to use two different buckets. And that's going to be how it goes. Now we're going to be doing this all the time. And because our algorithm has changed to where I don't know if it says it in here. So that changes that. So now we're going to go back to this and type in the up arrow a couple times, and that should get us to this and type in no. Drop out of here and do a show IP this. It's still going to forward it out. So the the per, uh, the Ceph aspect of it is going to be to elim eliminate what they would call um, polarization. And what polarization basically means is trying to take the same path over and over and over again. So by including ports, you're gonna you're going to disperse your forwarding a little bit differently than you would, and you have to do that on a per hop basis because every router makes an independent decision on how to move traffic. So that's pretty much that. And unfortunately, I can't do add path, but if I was going to do add path, I would have to do it on, say, 20. And I would have to go to the add, uh, AF interface gig 1 slash 0, and I would type it in, and it would be sitting right here at the top. It would say add path. And that's where you'd stick that. So I don't know if I have. Oh. 
Uh, actually, that's a good. Uh, it's it's kind of ironic that I did that. So we're gonna click on home for this. I'll click on this guy. I'll bring this guy open here. Enable config T. Uh, do show IP interface brief. Um, this is a CSR 1000 V that I have inside of um, VMware Workstation. So interface gig one uh, IP address is gonna be one dot or one dot one dot one dot one and all. Oh, let's give it a 24 bit mask and no shut. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna type in router eigrp ccie address family ipv4 a1 and we're gonna type in af interfaces gig one af interface uh, af interfaces gig one and then add add paths will be right. Um, would be at the top, add paths, and then it's going to ask us how many paths we want to add. And you can do up to four. Now the reason why you can only do that is because of the fact that that's the most we've got set up. So we're going to do show IP protocol. If you look where it says maximum paths is 32, we only have, um, well that's, or I'm sorry, uh, maximum paths right here. If you look right here it says four. Now if we were to click back in here and go to config t router eigrp ccie address, address family ipv4 a1 and type in maximum paths is going to uh, topology base maximum paths is going to be 32 and then I have a exit out of here go af interface gig 1 add paths oh it's only so long to me to do it okay well I guess I called me a liar but um when we do QoS, we'll be doing it through the CSRs, and I'm just I'm uh, taking my time getting to that point because I not that I'm uh, bad with QoS or anything like that, but I'm just um, I'm just going slow at it. So uh, to answer your question, this is actually where CS, uh, GNS3 is running that I'm uh, configuring all these devices for. So this is where it's, this is where it's sitting. So this is how I'm connecting into it. It's on a different computer than what I'm recording on. So it's actually on like completely. I'm RDP'd into that machine, and then I just uh, do a bunch of putty sessions to it. So that's add path. So I've shown you all the uh, path selection capabilities that there are for that. Uh, with feasibility condition, if your feasibility condition is broken, then you have a issue somewhere in the data plane where you need to modify the metrics to get where you need to be. Um, modify and delay. You can't modify the bandwidth, but the but by, by, by modifying the bandwidth, you're, all, you're not only going to modify the the, um, the interface bandwidth. If you modify that, it's going to take into condition in the EIGRP metrics as well as like quality of service and other things. So, um, and that is not the same as your bandwidth pacing. We'll talk about that coming up here later on. I hope this has been informative for you. I want to thank you for viewing.